all dear student today uh, in this video i am going to explain you how can we prepare a vermicompost uh, from your kitchen waste or also from the waste that is produced in your house uh, the organic waste but before i explain you about uh, the process of vermicompost uh, let us uh, let me tell you uh, the difference in the physical structure of a compost and a normal soil so you can see here in this uh, newspaper i have uh, taken a, some amount of uh, the compost this is the compost of cow dung uh, the cow dung after decomposition and this is the normal soil okay and uh, the difference you can see in the color this is uh, dark in color whereas this is light brown right yeah, so uh, this after decomposition uh, we call it as humus that is why uh, the topmost layer of the soil is always a little more darker in color as because it contains the nutrients and the humus that is produced out of the decomposition of the organic matter. Uh, now let us see how uh, we can uh, carry out uh, the process of vermicompost at home. So to do this, uh, here I have taken a box made of uh, paper. This is a cardboard box. Uh, since it's a biodegradable substance, it's eco-friendly, so I have used it. And uh, down to it, I'm going to put these pebbles uh, so that uh, wa the water or it will, uh, I mean, it will give a proper aeration and the proper bed preparation is needed. So to prepare a um, proper bed, uh, I will use some pebbles or stones or the broken bricks, etc. So first, I will lay out uh, all these uh, broken bricks and the pebbles as a bed the first preparation okay uh, then I will prepare an even bed like this okay. so our bed is uh, more or less ready uh, so this is the bed uh, in order to avoid, uh, uh, I mean in over, order to avoid the clumping because if you give water from the top, it may happen that the waste material will clump together and that may uh, create some problem of uh, unwanted smell as well as uh, can also uh, be the cause of uh, infection of some diseases. And uh, I forgot to tell you in advance, uh, whenever you do all, all such things, you should wear uh, gloves all the time, okay? But because uh, right now I don't have gloves at home, so I'm, uh, you, I'm just with bare hands, I'm going to show you how it is done. So uh, at first we will prepare the bed and then we will put the soil, okay? Uh, so uh, soil you can see here, I have just uh, took out uh, one clump of the soil. And in this soil you can see there are holes or pores, right? You can see one hole here. This hole is actually made by the earthworms that's why the earthworms are also known as the friends of farmer that's why the soil which contains a good amount of earthworm they are considered to be a very good quality because it keeps the soil uh, porous and soft so that uh, the roots you can see some grasses are growing on it the grasses if i uproot it it contains the root so if the soil is soft it helps really help the uh, grass or any plant or the crop plant to grow well and to penetrate well into the soil okay so such holes because it used to turn i mean go up and down and in the process it makes the soil porous and soft so after uh, this bed i will uh, prefer to give a uh, native soil because this soil uh, is the place from where i have collected the earthworm so that they will uh, feel the same homely atmosphere in this uh, artificial container also so i'm going to break this crump of soil uh, it contains earthworms also which I have just collected uh, then I'll, uh, here you can see an earthworm uh, which has just fallen down um, the earthworm and uh, here I will uh, put the soil earthworms uh, they are inside you can see one uh, part here this is the regular, our common species. Uh, these are sometimes called as ferritima or also lumbricus ferritima, our Indian origin uh, here. 
one one more here you can see i guess okay so i have i could not collect much i don't know what is the reason i could not collect much of the worms today but still i have uh, at least four to five worms which is enough for this size one you can see here this is uh, one type of the earthworm which is the ferritima species uh, which is a uh, native species of uh, our area the earthworm likewise the soil also will contain many of the cocoons out of which uh, uh, some may even uh, hatch out uh, after some time also so this soil i am giving uh, after the bed because they will have they will still have some homely environment because this soil is native to them so next to it i would like to put or give some uh, compost i mean the cow dung compost because it still contains some of the organic waste uh, you can see here the straw the straw which is not completely decomposed okay so uh, this all of this organic waste the earthworm will use as a food right they will eat on it and through the digestive system of uh, the earthworm uh, the castings whatever uh, the excreta the earthworm will give it will be converted into the compost so uh, actually for the decomposition part i am going to give this uh, organic waste this is actually the uh, cut parts of uh, the jungles which i have just collected you can give the kitchen waste also because every day in our kitchen lots of waste are produced so instead of uh, just uh, letting it to uh, i mean get decomposed uh, here and there we can manage it and also help in the proper management of the waste okay so in this way uh, the vermicompost is done uh, with the help of the organic substance I mean the dead remains of the plants or the leaf or even you can give uh, the waste collected from the uh, sabzi market or uh, from the vegetable market. So in this way uh, our process is complete. Now uh, in this way our process is complete. Uh, if possible we can keep uh, just uh, we can spread uh, some amount of soil on over the top also so that other flies or other unwanted things uh, will not be attracted to this area okay so uh, just uh, apart from doing this process there are some things which need to be uh, taken care of for example it needs a proper shade it should not be kept uh, under the sunlight because uh, the earthworms are very sensitive to light and temperature Okay, so they are, uh, I mean, they are favorable to moist as well as uh, cool and shady area. So you should keep in your keep it in your mind that your vermicompost unit uh, should be under any sh shed or uh, properly watered time to time. It should not be watered so much that it will be overflowed, but uh, at least the sprinkling of the water should be done regularly. Okay, should be kept moist and cool. Okay, so uh, this is done. And uh, to give it a shade, uh, I would use the same board. Uh, I mean, I can cover with this. I will just cover it and I will keep in a place which would be moist all, I mean, all day and night. And I mean, which will be cool and under a shade. So after, uh, say, 30 to 40 days, if I turn it out, we will see that all this green uh, waste or which is uh, now still fresh, I just have uh, cut it few minutes back. So all this will be turned into a dark color substance. So I will update you with my uh, next video also. Uh, after say 30 days, we will uh, keep the time. Uh, today is uh, 9th of May and exactly on um, 10th of June, we will check it. Uh, the, I mean, how it will look after one month or after 30 days. Okay. So I hope uh, you have understood it. If you want to experiment it and if you want to do it at your home, you can do so. Uh, so for today, uh, this much. Thank you.